Hi guys, if you were gone for the first day that we went over SAT questions, we reviewed what last year's Devlin students uh, most frequently missed. So here's the first one. The gross domestic product of Malta was approximately 250.72 million US dollars in 1970. From 1970 to 1980, a model indicates the GDP increased by 15% per year compared to the previous year's GDP. Which function represents this model where F of T is the estimated GDP in millions of US dollars and T is the number of years after 1970? So I would work on memorizing this formula for exponential growth, all right? And when we're doing exponential growth, A is always the initial amount. And B is always the growth factor or the growth rate. All right, so here, this would be our initial amount, amount because we are starting in 1970, and then we are increasing by 15% per year. Now, you can't just put 15% in your parentheses. It's 100% plus the 15% we're increasing by, so that would be answer D. All right. Uh, the height of a certain tree in 2016 was 1.35 times the height of the tree in 2011. By what percentage did the height of the tree increase from 2011 to 2016? So, this is that whole BIA box, if you guys ever did this in pre-algebra or algebra 1. Uh, the before would be 2011 and the after would be 2016. So if this was 1.35 times the initial height, this would be 1.35 and this would be 1. Or we could do this as a percentage, so 135, 100%, and so my increase would be that 35%. Um, and so what percent did it increase by? Just 35%. A bag contains X apples, Y oranges, and Z pears. If one of these fruits is selected at random, what is the probability of selecting a fruit that is not an orange? So if we're not doing an orange, we can do one minus the probability of an orange. That would give me not an orange, all right? So one minus the probability of getting an orange. So there are Y oranges and we always do our probability out of the total here so x plus y plus z so my answer is d all right the histogram shown show summarizes two da data sets p and q so here we have p here we have Q. Which of the following statements best compares the ranges and standard deviations of the two data sets? So what we have is a list of numbers and then the frequency that they occur. All right. And so we're looking for the range, which one has the greater range, all right, and then the standard deviation. So range is your low to high, all right. So which one of these has a greater range? There are more values here from like 0 to 34 uh, versus this one. So I would say P has a greater range. So now we can cross these off. So P has a greater range. So standard deviation, we're looking at our typical distance from the center. So which one has a greater standard de deviation? Um, so that would be more spread from the center. So this one here, this would be the middle of the graph. And, and here, probably, this is the middle of the graph. Um, your median, you could look at, you could find, or your mean. Um, but basically, this one has a lot more spread as there are more points further away from the center. So you're not looking at the spread in the y direction. You're looking at the spread in the x direction because this is just a frequency graph. All right, And this one has a lot um, more points close to the middle. So P has a greater standard deviation than Q. 
All right, set K consists of all the positive integers that are less than or equal to 150, where none of the integers are repeated. If a number is selected at random from set K, what is the probability of selecting a number that is even and less than or equal to 30? All right, so K is all positive integers that are less than or equal to 150. So positive integers start at, at 1, <laughs> all right, and we go all the way up to 150. Okay, none of the integers are repeated. If a number is selected from this set, what's the probability from this set of selecting a number that is even and less than or equal to 30? So the even numbers that are less than or equal to 30. All right, so how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, there are 15 of those. And then it's out of the whole set of K, which is 150. And so that answer is just 10%, or if you're plugging it in as a decimal, I think sometimes they have you write these as decimals. Um, it says express your answer as a decimal or fraction, not as a percent. All right. All right, a quadratic function can be used to model the height and feet of an object above the ground in terms of time in seconds after the object was launched. According to the model, an object was launched into the air from a height of zero feet and reached its maximum height of 784 feet seven seconds after it was launched. Based on the model, what was the height and feet of the object three seconds after it was launched? There are a couple ways to do this. You need to know this formula. And we actually are doing this in Algebra 2 right now, but it's probably been a while. So we have our negative 16 from gravity, and you just kind of need to know that. All right, we've got our time. Um, this is our initial velocity right here. And this one is our initial height. All right. So we want to plug in anything we know, and the only thing we have really is one coordinate point. So you could plug this 7 in, all right, for the time, and plug this in for the ending height, all right. It is launched from a height of 0 feet, so h naught is 0. And you would be solving for the velocity in this part, okay? Um, another way to do these are by using vertex form. Uh, we do t minus, okay, where h and k are the maximum. Okay, this is like an x. t is just your x variable. So you may have seen this also written like this, all right? And I would know that formula for parabolas because this is really just a downward parabola. All right, because of gravity, we have A here at negative 16, and then time is our X, and then we have actually a maximum. So they gave us this maximum right here. All right, um, based on the model, what was the height and feet of the objects three seconds after it was launched? So we know the maximum now is minus 7, okay? That h, by the way, represents x time, all right, plus 784. So there's our maximum amount. And now we can also plug in the 3. So what is the height of the object 3 seconds after it's launched. So you can plug in three for time and get your answer. You are allowed to use a calculator on this one, um, and then you're done. All right, how many solutions does this equation have? Uh, I would definitely learn kind of some of these solution things. So in case you guys forgot, uh, you could have two lines that cross at one point. That's one solution. You could have two lines that are parallel. All right, and two lines that are parallel have no solutions because they never cross. Um, and then you could also have a line right on top of a line. It's like the exact same line. So they're touching infinite number of times. All right, this is infinite solutions. So what happens algebraically? 
well, let's solve this. I have 3x minus 8. And over here I have x plus, let's distribute that, 2x minus 8. And so I have 3x minus 8 equals 3x minus 8. So I right away, I know this is the same line, all right? Another thing you could do is subtract the 3x. Like you just kept solving and you got negative 8 equals negative 8. This is a true statement. Anytime you get a true statement like 0 equals 0, 5 equals 5, like this, that means infinite solutions. All right, if you happen to solve, and let's say this was a 9, and you got negative 8 equals negative 9, that's not true. That is one of the no solution answers. All right, and if you just solved and you actually got like 8x equals negative 8, then you'd plug back in and find y, and that would be one solution. All right, a company offers its salespeople two different weekly compensation plans. Salespeople on plan X earn $1,000 plus a 10% commission on their sales each week. Salespeople on plan Y earn $500 plus a 20% commission on their sales each week. Which inequality models the amount in sales each week, D dollars, for which the salespeople on plan X earn more than the salespeople on plan Y? All right, so I want plan X to earn more than plan Y. So plan X people get $1,000 plus a 10% commission on their amount of sales, which they say is D dollars. We want this to be greater than, because it says plan X earns more, than plan Y. So plan Y is just 500 plus that 20% commission. And we solve, so I'm going to subtract the 500, and I'm going to subtract 10% here of D, and I'm going to divide by this 10%, which gives me 5,000 is greater than D. So if 5,000 is greater than D, that means that D is also less than 5,000. What is an equation of the graph shown? So this graph um, is an exponential growth graph as well. You could just plug in points. Like I could be like, all right, is this point uh, on the line here? Or is this point on the model here? Um, you could also try to remember your parent graphs, all right? So y equals 2 to the x. What does that look like? Well, if I plug in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. If I plug in 1, uh, I get 2. All right, if I plug in negative 1, 2 to the negative 1, that's actually 1 half. So negative 1 gives me 1 half. Negative 2 actually gives me 1 fourth. And so we end up getting this curve for exponential growth. All right, this is called the parent graph, though. What happened is I shifted it down 2. All right, and so that one is the correct answer. I could also check this. Like when I plug in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Um, I could plug in 1. So 2 to the first is 2, minus 2 is 1. And make sure all those points line up on that uh, graph, okay? You might want to know some of your exponentials. Uh, it's definitely helpful to know like how they shift. And so this graph for absolute value always makes a V, right? And this graph for the X squared graph always makes a parabola, okay? Those are our parent graphs. Um, you might want to review some of those. And then how do they shift, all right? So if I add 2 right here, that's going to make it go up 2. So this graph would shift up too, all right? Or if you have something inside, it does the opposite and moves left or right. So this one's up, okay, this one's always left or right, but opposite. So minus two actually means right two. So that one would shift it right two, etc. All right, the equation of the circle in the xy plane is shown. What is the radius of the circle? Um, so we need to complete the square. You also need to know the formula for circles. I've seen this on the SAT a lot, all right? We do x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And so the center of your circle is always h comma k, and then r is your radius. So you'd have to square root it or whatever. So what I need to do is complete the square and put it in this form. So you want to put your x stuff together 
plus a space, and then your y stuff together. So y squared plus 5y plus a space equals negative 45 fourths. All right, we take half the middle number and square it. So I take half of this and square it. I take half of this and square it. So that's 25 fourths. I'm making these perfect squares. I also need to add these to the other side. All right, I just made this a perfect square trinomial. So it factors x plus 3 squared. I just made this a perfect square trinomial, and so it factors x plus 5 halves squared. Over here, I need common denominators. So you got to multiply this by 4 over 4. So negative 36, uh, or sorry, negative 45 plus 36 is 9. You got to think about that for a sec. Maybe that's 11 plus 25 is 36. All right, there we go. Um, all right, and so it's asking me what is the radius of the circle, which is the square root of this. So the radius would be 6 over 2, square root, and then that's 3. Okay, if it did ask for the center, the center would be negative 3, negative 5 halves. I would definitely know this formula for circles. All right, you guys, that concludes uh, the review session for this. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.